Like with your Jack Nine hand, we'll tell everybody how bad it was. You, we were near the bubble, I think. You yeah, limped we from the small blind with Jack Nine. I had pocket kings. I always have a good hand against Justin because I know he's going to rip it in my face. So uh, I race at three, three and a half big blinds, whatever. And then Justin just rips it all in for what, 27 or something. I was like 23, so, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. What, whatever it is. So in the spot, what were you thinking when you ripped it in? So John I thought, has nothing easy all in. Yeah, I, I, I thought that you had plenty of raising hands uh, that you would have to fold to a rip to. I, I, I thought you were full of shit probably like a third of the time, <laughs> uh, in all honesty. So I thought it was going to be like a snap fold. And the rest of the time, you know, the other like, not two thirds, but probably closer to like, you know, 40% of the time that like, you know, you're going to have a hand that puts you in a real tough spot. It's just we're near the money. Not that you're like a penny pincher, like trying to like, you know, get sneak into the money, but like hands like ace 10 or pocket fours or pocket sixes, even like you're just going to have to shrug and fold, which is. Well, I will tell you, I would, I would never raise those on the bubble. Ace 10. Yes. Sixes. No. Okay. We'll see. Because, <laughs> because I think you're going to rip it in on me a lot. So I'm going to be super polarized here. Like, I don't even know, like nines and better, ace, 10 and better, king, queen, and then total junkers. Queen, See, queen and like, I, I, I read it like the other that. way because like, I don't know what exactly what you think of me outside of, I know you think I'm an, an idiot, not an idiot, but like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, I'm pretty sure you think I'm an idiot, which is fine. <laughs> but like, I, I, I did think uh, you, you wanted to kind of gain a uh, range advantage with a better hand a lot of the time. Uh, and play a, a slightly bigger pot against somebody on the bubble. So, like, may, I, I, clearly, I was wrong with that read. <laughs> like, I'll Justin tell you, on the bubble, Justin loves to call. So, I, I thought yeah, I would think you would want to you would want to be more linear so that he could he would peel a flop a lot. Yeah, like I mean, <laughs> yeah, but not with like pocket sixes or pocket fours. You know, like yeah. you're not yeah. you're not crushing it with pocket sixes. But then or Jack Nine I mean, okay against uh, against Ace King and Ace Queen. You know, it just you happen to have kings. I think we got our hand of the week this week. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I just got unlucky. So like, <laughs> yeah, you got unlucky. You're right. That was it. No trouble. Bad beat, buddy. You just ran into I, I, it. Somehow I John Little always has aces or kings when you decide to put in all your money. That's just bad luck for you. Should we have like an anti pokercoaching.com where where Justin does like hands and then uh, and then we have like actual poker coaches come in and they just like tear them apart, tear them apart hmm. weekly? Hmm. That 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 would actually be nice. All right, I, we got the money making opportunity for the podcast now. <laughs> On, on our website, we have a few people who come in as like students. Like we have Rampage Poker who punts his face off anytime he has a chance. And uh, he goes through hands with Chris Brewer. And Chris That's is like, awesome. this is so far off the game tree. <laughs> Nowhere close. There you go. And he's like, maybe it's fine if he's going to fold way too often, but he's just not. He knows you're a punter. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I get it now. All right. He knows you're a punter. I mean, he's, he's going to call. Obviously. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember who was at the table. But as I was sulking, probably mumbling or whatever, I think someone else at the table was like, well, it came Jack High. Like, he probably would have gone bust anyway. And I was like, that's <laughs> not fucking right. That. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just condescending. Well, to be fair, you probably would have gone broke anyway. Get a Jack. Yeah. Right. Top pair. <laughs> Can't be going around folding top pair. I will bluff. Oh, my God. Yeah. I tripled it off on the on the on one of the bubbles against Byron Caberman. And I don't know. That was that was Robert 07 style. Just this, you know, yeah. off a gut shot, check raise flop, bet turn jam river, no problem. Ouch. Uh, but I got a. <laughs> I could tell you after the call, but I got a nasty uh, read on Byron, so I I, I can mm. tell you his tell for the future. Sorry, Byron, but Jay Little's gonna start owning. I'll soon. take it. Byron <laughs> just always has it against me, kind of like I have it against Robert. Byron has it against me. Sorry, Justin Robert. We all call Justin Robert. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for for anyone that's confused. My online poker name when uh, John <laughs> and I met was Robert O Seven, and since then there's. I think about half a dozen people in the poker community that don't know my real name is Justin. They they call me Robert. And <laughs> though I'm pretty sure John knows my name is Justin, he will never refer to me as anything other than Robert or Robert 07. Dr. Robert 07. Dr. Robert 07, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm only a doctor and donking. Do Dr. Donking, <laughs> next screen. But, but so anyway, in spots like that, if I was in your shoes, I would have limped, I would have gotten raised, I would have thought, okay, what's this raising range look like? Fine. Is it going to be decent? Do you think I am anywhere near decent? And if you know what decent looks like, just call and see the flop. Yeah. But instead you're thinking either you don't know what decent is because you haven't studied it, or John's just trying to push me around. And he's going to fold the ace-10 or the pocket sixes to a shove or whatever. And I don't really have those thoughts. I just presume everyone there is going to make pretty decent plays without a good reason to think they're bad for lack of better words right and if i don't think they're bad one way or the other i'm just gonna do what the chart says limp and then call and go from there pop top pair yeah. go broke anyway 
Yeah, I mean, and, and and all that's fair, but like I'm also coming from a point of knowing I'm ignorant, like at least comparatively to the field in, in general. And like I'm not you trying gotta to study some man. It's not hard. Sure, sure, I got a sure. website. <laughs> I'll give I you a free membership. That that, that 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 is that is the logical uh, path to take. But instead, I put myself in situations knowing that I, I I'm generally going to get outplayed by the top five like, percent of poker players, and that's fine. So I I choose to take higher uh, variant uh, paths uh, on purpose uh instead of studying uh <laughs> and obviously it's worked out and not worked out like you know it's a very very fine double-edged sword um but you know that that's kind of my thought like if, if you're gonna get basically if you get heads up against somebody you know is better than you you take high variant spots you you start making it you know four or five x you start like check raising more like loosely or whatever just to kind of take the uh the skill out of the game a bit and that's Justin, kind of I my thought, this... and even the, it might be irrational, but that's that's kind of what like the way I attack a lot of those poker go tournaments. Pretend like you're an engineer for a minute. You're gonna have to put in a 40 hour work week, okay? I have a 40 hour crash course on my site that will teach you to be better than almost everyone. Now, certainly not the best players in the world, sure. but you'll like kind of know how to play most spots on pokercoaching.com. Go check it out. The <laughs> tournament masterclass. We also have a cash game one. You're probably fine enough at cash games. So uh <laughs> maybe you should go through it at least the icm spots very no, for sure yeah no, I, and, and it'll I, take you I like completely... seven hours yeah and i agree with that like it's 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 part of like in my mind i'm thinking like if i get regimented enough to where i play the exact same or you know at least a notch off of like the top players then all of a sudden like my plays become regimented as opposed to feel or or reads or whatever like you know like and that's it's a little scary to me like i don't want to kind of go down that rabbit hole and like I still should. I believe me, I should. I, yeah, I that's should. that's a cop out because you because you could can, you can still up the, you like, can still feel. Anything, yeah, if anything, yeah. it's going to make you like just really awesome at those spots where your all your instincts can come into play. No, like, yeah, look at my me, mind. Like, you you need to have a good strong uh, understanding of GTO strategies, right. because if you don't really know where you're starting from, you're not going to know how far to adjust and where to adjust to. And certainly, you can run solvers with node locking, so you like. Assume the opponent's going to raise too many bluffs and you're going to jam way more, right? right? So stuff like that. So the question is, how much more should you jam? Is Jack nine a shove or is it a call? Still, even if I'm raising too many bluffs, I don't know. But you can study that kind of stuff, right? And can you? I, I mean, I, like, I, if you never, listen to what I said, never used I, to solve it. <laughs> if you listen to what I said, even like Chidwick's doing, who I think is like trying to be a GTO robot, he will think of what the GTO chart says and then he'll adjust it to whatever he thinks the opponent's doing wrong. And quite often the answer is he doesn't know or nothing. If he doesn't know or nothing, your feelings matter way less, unless you're like super sharp at live reads or something, which right. obviously you're not against me. So, <laughs> you know, so you probably just need to play closer to GTO. No, or realize, that's... realize your feelings really don't matter and they're wrong and you should go against them. If you think you should rip it in, you should just fold instead. <laughs> John, you're 100% right, by the way. I, I'm, not, I'm not defending my stance out of any kind of a uh, place of knowledge buddy, he's a, i'm he's just a trying coach. to help this my is friend what he does. he's trying, he's no, trying no. to bring you up <laughs> i'm just trying to bring you up buddy no no i i, and I appreciate all i that. want is for you to finally win something at life <laughs> you put in your time man you put in your time come on please i want to see you succeed yeah it, i i remind myself it's 9 a.m in vegas right now and you're having beer <laughs> chatting about poker in a green screen room come on man I want you to win. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, me too. Me too, buddy. (laughs) No, I I, I actually view myself in kind of a dinosaur-ish spot where like when I got a decent at poker or whatever, uh, 2007, 8, 9, whatever, a lot of the older pros would come in and still do the things they shouldn't do, like raise to 5X and like they would never defend like three bets and stuff like that. And I was like, oh. It's so exploitable. Like these idiots, like they're just going to die out soon. And now I'm the idiot. And I understand that. And like, I'm, I'm holding on to uh, how I want poker to be as opposed to adapting. And I, that's, that is one of my flaws. That, I have but, many flaws. But guess what? That's why we have our own game at table one, because this <laughs> yeah, is where the dinosaurs own. play. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> if you don't want to play against someone that's super good, you can either get better or you can start your own game. <laughs> Those are the two option. options in cash yeah. games nowadays. You either got to be super good or make your own. Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slack.